Uh, we'll talk to Nelson Creston uh, MLA Michelle Mungall about what it means for our local Kootenai region. All that and more in the next hour. This is Kootenai Morning on Kootenai Co-op Radio. Kootenai Morning is Kootenai Co-op Radio's current affairs program. The show is produced and hosted by a team of dedicated volunteers and supported by listeners just like you. We'd like to thank today's sponsors, Vince DeVito Shoes, up on Hall Street here in downtown Nelson, vincedevito.ca, on that internet thing. And you can give them a call, 250-352-6261, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5.30, and Saturday, 9.30 to 5 p.m. And we are also sponsored on Friday by Col Najar, Real Life Real Estate, your Kootenai BC property matchmaker, 250-505-4722. And you can buy yourself a uh, lightly dusted with snow house uh, this morning. It's a little little beautiful out there this morning if you're listening uh, live at 8 o'clock. Uh, news uh, headlines, this is the time of the day where we uh, put together a little bit of uh, news and information for you. But uh, fortunately, we had a little bit of help uh, yesterday. Uh, Nelson Creston, uh, MLA Michelle Mungall, uh, reached out to Cute Morning uh, to talk about uh, the recently announced uh, budget, 2019, and uh, what it means for our local Kootenai region. And as I queue up that interview, uh, we can hear what she had to say. On the line is Michelle Mungall, the Nelson Creston MLA. And uh, she's here today to talk to us about uh, the recent uh, BC budget. Thanks for having me on uh, the line today. I really appreciate it. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity just to let constituents know about what is in our BC budget for them because uh, there's a lot there that I I feel, after 10 years of representing our region, really reflects the values that uh, we have and uh, the types of programs that we need to make life better for us in the Kootenays. Uh, and one of the things that uh, I was uh, personally very pleased to see, and people won't be surprised based on my history as an advocate for people living in poverty, but once again, our government is raising rates for in- people on income assistance and disabilities by another $50 a month. We're also making services, the government services that they rely on so regularly, better. We want to make sure that people are being treated with dignity, so we're ensuring that we have proper staffing levels and they have the proper training. Another thing that's going to be really important for our young people in the area who are going to post-secondary school is that their interest on their BC student loan will no longer accrue. They will have an interest-free BC student loan starting immediately. So the interest they've already accrued, they're going to have to pay that for those who already have, I'm sorry to say, but the good news going forward, no more interest. And so that's going to save our young people a lot of money so that they can get off in life with a good financial, a better financial start. For the young families who have children, well, there's the, our, our child care program continues to roll out, and we're on our way to make that a universal program where people are paying uh, close to $10 a day, and we we'll continue to roll that out. But one of the big things is the new BC Child Opportunity Benefit. So there was a program similar to this that ended at six, at six years old. That is now changing, and it's... Uh, children, uh, families with children up to 18 years old are going to be getting this benefit, and it's now at $1,600 per year for those with uh, one child, and it goes up from there the more children you have. And so there's uh, more money for longer periods for families uh, in our area. We all, almost all of us, pay our MSP premiums. Good news, that's eliminated. No more MSP premiums. Uh, and, and the benefit of that is that one of the largest uh, income or one of the largest tax cuts for British Columbians in, in history. And actually, overall, British Columbians and people right here in the Kootenays are going to be paying 43% less in taxes because of this budget. Another issue, uh, Anthony, that people really care about in our region, as you know, is climate change. And we committed to Clean BC back in December. And I'm going to be doing some open houses over the spring so people can learn more about Clean BC and what we're going to be doing in British Columbia to reduce our impact on climate change. We are funding that to the tune of $900 million for programs like helping uh, people, low-income people as well, buy electric vehicles, 
that run on clean power, helping Indigenous remote and rural communities get off diesel and onto clean renewable energy, uh, looking at buildings and how we can make our buildings uh, net zero so that they are reducing their emissions as well. Uh, there's a whole host of programs that we're going to be helping people out in our area, especially those heritage homeowners. This is a good opportunity for you with Efficiency BC to retrofit and reduce your energy costs. So lots in this budget for people uh, in our area, lots that reflect our values. And, uh, and I mean, health care and education also have a, a good list. And uh, I'm really proud of what we're able to deliver for people in the Kootenays. It sounds rather exciting that uh, a lot of these uh, initiatives are things that are uh, affecting uh, families. Certainly that's a, a big issue for people here in the, in the Kootenays and Nelson specifically, lots of uh, young families. Yeah, you're, you can lump yourself into that category as well, I suppose, Michelle. What, uh, what I remember hearing was something about uh, uh, daycare initiatives with a $10 a day daycare. Is there any sort of uh, movement in, in that area with the budget? So we started our, our path to uh, a universal child care program last year with our budget last year. And uh, what we had there is that we were uh, reducing fees for parents uh, in licensed care facilities. Uh, we're reducing those fees uh, uh, up to $350 per month. And uh, that's impacting 52,000 child care spaces. And there's... Uh, that includes right in our area, and we are continuing on with our uh, pilot project for $10 daycare, and we have actually were able to secure uh, seats, or, sorry, spaces in our area for that $10 day pilot program um, in Nelson specifically. And we are actually, with this budget, providing $237 million over the next three years to support the creation of new licensed care spaces. So lots of families on wait lists in our area with new spaces means less wait times, less wait lists, and we can get kids into the care that they need. Will there be a focus on uh, getting people to actually be the caregivers in those situations as well? Uh, in terms of uh... Absolutely. Part of our plan has always been about uh, supporting caregivers. I mean, you can't you can't do a plan without doing that, right? And so, uh, looking at the post secondary opportunities for caregivers, but also wage increases, and we've committed to that as well as part of our plan. Were there any final thoughts that you wanted to share about the budget? Well, I really encourage people to take a, a look at it. There's a lot in this budget, and I'm going to be uh, speaking to it uh, in the legislature on Thursday, and. So if people get an opportunity to uh, go online, they can always take a look at that. That's the permanent record. And I'll be able to uh, give more detail on just how much this benefits people in our area. But uh, as I told, said to Carol James, our finance minister, she delivered a beautiful budget that's putting people first. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, share what you know about the budget uh, with our listeners here at Kootenai Co-op Radio, Michelle. Thank you so much and have a great day. You too. Bye now. Bye-bye. We just heard an interview with Nelson Creston, MLA, Michelle Mungal, talking about the recently announced uh, B.C. provincial budget. You can learn more from Michelle on her website, michellemungal.ca. Also in the news, we have uh, another uh, budget-related item that we pulled from the Nelson Star. Uh, BC, B.C.'s carbon tax is set to increase again on April the 1st, with rising revenues directed away from personal income tax reductions to targeted programs designed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Some of the proceeds from the tax on carbon fuels goes to increase tax credits to offset the impact for low- and middle-income families. Effective July 1, 2019, the maximum rebate increases 14% for adults and children for a maximum tax benefit of $400 a year. Finance Minister Carol James has budgeted $107 million to cover BC's point-of-sale rebates for zero-emission vehicles over three years out of a $900 million overall budget for its Clean BC initiative. Under former Premier Christy Clark, the tax was $30 a ton of emissions from 2013 to 2017. The NDP government raised the tax by $5 a ton last spring and it is increasing to $40 a ton this spring. The impact of the tax is now about $0.08 cents on a litre of gasoline at the pump. The Zero Emission Vehicle Program is administered by the New Car Dealers Association of BC. It provides 
up to $5,000 for purchase or lease of a new battery, electric 